Hello again. In this video, I'm going to follow up on some viewers' comments since last time. Uh, one that really caught my eye was um, a hoverboard motor. Uh, now, these are available uh, very cheaply. Um, they're very powerful units. They're a three-phase, 350-watt unit uh, running at 36 volts in their um, previous life. Um, so I'm going to see what I can do with that. Uh, the other thing of interest was um, uh, Peltier effect modules or cells or, or thermoelectric as some people call them. Um, it's, they've been quite, it's quite interesting because, the, because the, the power from this engine isn't particularly great. Um, I want to explore other options and other uses for it other than uh, the, the Sterling engine itself gener generating power. Um, so I've, I've, I'm going to explore that as well. Okay, before we run the engine again, I'll just take you over some of the changes I've made since last time, and then we'll go from there. This is a wheel and motor assembly off of a hoverboard. It's quite a robust unit. Um, inside, it's got a very big motor. The motor is basically the whole wheel inside, and then it's just got a rubber tire on the outside. Um, what attracted me about this is it's an all-in-one unit um, and it can it should be able to push up against a flywheel like that and um, and be driven by the Sterling engine plus it was very cheap as well you can get these for £29 um, new off of uh, eBay I picked this one up for £20 second hand I'll just show you the wiring so it's a three phase motor so there's our, our phases here, one, two, three. Uh, the other connector is, um, I think it's Hall Effect um, sensors. Um, I'm not planning on using that unless uh, unless it gets a bit more sophisticated with those. Um, what, what's quite interesting about this is, and I should be experienced playing around these four, you can spin it very easily like that. It will really spin. But you, you connect these three cables together I'll just hold it steady and this is really stiff like that I'll disconnect them again oh that's still connected and yeah spins easy so it's got some serious torque really it's quite incredible really um the assembly well uh, all the mount the mounting plate let's position my camera so I've used the original bearings. Uh, originally I had an, another a second shaft here that was driven by a chain. So I've reused those bearings. I've made this pivot pivot mechanism that pushes it up against that. And then I can use my bungee strap, which can be, and then that, that'll pull it up to there. So nice and simple. This is the thermoelectric cell, which I've ordered off eBay. It works on the Peltier effect, um, as I understand. It's got two wires coming out of it. Um, what happens is if we apply the voltage to those wires, um, it's in the matter of a few volts. Um, I don't know exactly what the voltage is meant to be. The information is a bit sparse on these. Um, there is a specification, um, but, but it's a bit evasive to me, to say the least. Um, if you apply the voltages to these, um, then one side would get hot <coughs> and the other side would get cold. If we reverse the polarity of the voltage, then, um, then the, the cold side would be getting hot and the hot side would be getting cold. Another thing that these will do is, if you place them in a position where one side is hot, say the side of our furnace and the other side is cold this is a heat sink so the heat sink went on like, there like that then it should create a voltage my interest is um, to find out how how much current this will give out uh, and how long it will last um, in the temperature range of this um, the specification sheet that I found um, says it goes to 1200 degrees um centigrade um i don't i don't believe that if i'm perfectly honest i don't know whether the specification sheet was from a reliable source or not it was just something i found on the internet um i'm going to stick this on with some thermal glue 
This is a HY910 thermal glue and it's made by uh, Hainsley, I think. Does it say Hainsley? I can't really see it. I don't think the camera will focus that much. Anyway, um, this is um, this is heat proof up to over 300 degrees. So I'm hoping this will be okay. Um, I haven't actually checked the temperature of this, so hopefully it won't get too hot. Yep, so that's what I'm going to do. All right, so the engine's all all heated up and ready to go. I'll just take you over this here. This is so. This is uh, three phases. I've got the um, the multimeter, which is set to volts um, between two of the phases to give us a voltage between phases. There's a multimeter here. It's Right, so the engine is running at roughly 200 RPM and the voltage between phases, two of the phases on this three phase motor is 15 to 16 volts. Um, I'll just turn the engine up because it's just dropped off there, but it's going down. It'll probably stop in a minute. Yeah, so 200 RPM is 16 to 17 volts. So now we're running at 250 RPM and voltage is 24 volts. <clears throat> All right, it's running about 300 RPM now. It's about as fast as you realistically want to run the thing. And we're getting about 26 volts at the moment, AC. Right, so test number two, I've connected this cable to the three phases of the hoverboard motor or generator in this case. What I've got here is a wind generator controller. Uh, this this goes up to 500 watts. Um, the rated um, ultra operating voltage is 12 volts or 24. Um, I've got a 12 volt battery which is connected to. Um, I've been led to believe that this will tolerate anything up to 30 volts um, alternating current input from our, our generator and then peaks of 40 volts so I think that should be within range of, of what we're looking for it's got two indicator lights here it's got a red indicator light which means it's put on the electronic brake to slow it down because normally this would be a wind power turbine and you don't want your wind power turbine to with speed um, the green light is apparently it's meant to flash um when the generator is 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 turning and then i got this going through our watt meter i haven't connected it up yet i'll just quickly put the terminal on so there's our watt meter 12.14 volts zero amps zero watts and uh, notice the green light is now solid on the wind generator controller Yeah, it, it did properly, everyone, yes. Yeah, it was spinning in the floor. Yep, it worked. So, the green light is on solid, and the red light is on as well, which is meant to indicate that the brake is actually active at the moment. Out. Now, 100 and 150-ish watt at the moment at 13.6 volt. So that's a charging voltage. I'll just have to try not to uh, get my hand caught on something that's going to hurt me very much. So the speed is 260 RPM, which is actually a really nice speed actually. So I've turned the RPM of the engine all the way down, but the, the red indicator light is still on, indicating that the battery is fully charged, which means the dump load has been um, activated. This, um, this unit is the dump load. It's got a uh, heat sink on the bottom and some kind of internal resistance that, that gets rid of energy. Right, so I've just had a look up on the internet because I didn't know what the fully charged voltage of a 12 watt battery is. 
Um, Google tells me it is 12.6 volts. I'll just try that a minute. Uh, no, I was talking to the camera, Isaac. Oh. So, there you go. To make a video? Yeah, making a video. So that's 12.7 volts. So this battery is fully charged, and that red light is on because it is fully charged. Um, what I might try and do now is try and find some 12 volt items to connect up to this to um, put some kind of load on it. Right, in a vain attempt to try and put some electrical load on this thing, or reasonable electrical load, I've got my fan connected up, a 12 volt water pump which is 72 watts rated power um, and also a 12 volt water pump which is 100 watts rated power. As a side project I've got my Peltier Effect thermoelectric uh, module or cell attached to the side of the, the furnace what I'm aiming to do is see how much voltage this is giving out at the moment. So this is giving out uh, 0 0.77 volts according to this voltmeter. I'll just change it to amperage a minute. Well, on the lowest range, yeah, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Pretty sure I got it on the right, on the right plug. Yeah, so I got it on the plug fused to uh, 500 milliamps. It shouldn't be. It's not on the 10 10 milliamp, mate. One. No, unless me unless me fuse is gone. Yeah, mate. What's that? No, unless the fuse is gone in this, I haven't tested it. If I'm honest. So the engine's running at a fair old lick now. I mean, that's a good speed, really. Quite sensible, really. Our watt meter is reading it's only about 80 watts. This is pulling. Uh, surprising what you can do with 80 watts, actually. Because we got the fano running. You can hear that. That's running pretty much flat out. Uh, we got a pump running. This one here. So we got low. Uh, these are both high pressure pumps. If you just step out of the way, Isaac. That's, that's uh, it's only for this is high pressure. Out of the way, Isaac. Move it. Move out of the way. So this is actually a high pressure pump. So it, it's actually uh, it will actually blow water quite a long way, really. And you can hear the engine slowing down as I'm doing that. And I'll let go again, and the engine should speed up a bit. So that's it. That's the that's the fun for the day concluded.